block from the details this is the block make it the default means our baseline or base component now we call individual components after block let me call slide block this one open that slide block and this slide block is to be aligned with this the center line of this slide block and the center line of this coincides with each other and put that slide block over here it automatically mates with this component like this so these two components are assembled as shown over here and the axes are aligned after alignment of this axis its horizontal movement would be restricted only it can rotate it like this if we restrict its rotational movement then it will not move it will not rotate so this is assembled both the parts are assembled now we called third component from the assembly list we place it so that it can be aligned with this one on both the sides this block is inserted so let we assemble this block on another side as well and this surface and this surface both mate with each other so it is moved now restrict its movement its axial movement and its alignment so it is aligned with the axis now to restrict its rotary movement let we mangle make an angle of offset 0 degree so it will not be offset and it will align with this axis so now all these three components are assembled together now we call another component that is piston rod number 2 piston rod you can see here this is piston rod this one now from this assembly detail drawing let we call this piston rod from here open it this yellow colored is an piston rod align this piston rod with this hole somewhere here put it over here it could be assembled in this hole mate it to this face so this face could be mate with this one and this piston rod is assembled align that piston rod on th in this hole so this gap get aligned and we can insert the push rod in that gap and restricts its movement in all direction by making alignment of this plane and making an angle of offset 0 degree this one so that it cannot be rotated its movement is restricted with the help of this offset angle 0 degree now correct it so this is assembled as it could be seen here so four components are assembled now the next is from the detail drawing we can see gajian pin number 3 this gajian pin how to insert this gajian pin so call that gajian pin from the detail drawings place it to such that it aligns with this axis so axis of gajian pin and axis of this hole aligned to each other it could be inserted like this and after inserting it should be mate with the surface of this hole and offset distance is zero so here it could be inserted offset this insert inside this and this insert this distance 50 mm so it will be offset by 50 mm like this as per the need it could be offsetted now it is inserted inside like this so this component is also assembled or inserted with given offset so this another component is assembled and this is the assembly of given details now we call cotter this is the cotter how to insert this cotter that we will see here this cotter is to be inserted over here this is the hole which allows the cotter to be inserted so pick up this cotter put it such that this surface mates 
with this surface this one so they both should meet with each other and it could be moved from this place and it could align with this plane so this plane should be aligned with this vertical plane and hence it could be readily inserted inside this quarter hole so this quarter is also inserted in this assembly like this now it could be moved only and quarter is totally constrained from all movement only it can move with the assembly so these are all the components assembled over here we can see various views from here we can color each components one by one like this offset red color to be given to this component and this one apply so this both the components become red this coloring is made just to distinguish all the components we can alter the colors like this say here green color is adopted or we can take any color we can select any color from this file menu appearance editor now we pick up this component push rod we select blue color for this push rod apply this so it could be made blue color this block having blue color so that this assembly could appear better this is another say for this quarter let we use another color yellow color so this is the detail assembly drawing of given details you could easily understand with the help of this coloring of the object now explored exploded view of all this component means they are disassembled and their relative positions are shown at certain distance so this is the exploded view of this assembly again assembled view of this assembly i hope the detail is clear to you how they are assembled to each other and the relative position between each part they could be easily understood with this assembly moment so these are mood with respect to this and this is the default view for this assembly so i hope it would be clear to you now we see one more example example number 7.3 the data is given like this draw an assembly drawing of drill jig shown over here draw detailed drawings of the individual parts and create a standard parts sheet so this example is given to us for example for in examination this is asked many times and this is the assembly drawing of complete of this given component complete the section view by adding the appropriate section lines let we do the exercise for this assemble part 5 before part number 4 here bill of material is prepared so this is the component which shows the section lines and this components are cut and according to show on the internal details the section lines are drawn over here fill in the part number in the correct balloon the parts list and the title block this is the exercise that you can do part numbers are filled 1 2 3 4 5 6 5 and this is the bill of material for this component say so component number 1 this is the base component number 2 this one this is end bracket component number 3 this one this is center plate number 4 is a hexagonal headed bolt number 5 is a head screw which is inserted over here number 6 is a head nut this one two head nuts are there two head screws are there two hexagonal headed bolts are there and bracket to one center plate and one base which is made up of steel 
so this is the bill of material which is drawn over here scale number of sheet sheet number drawn by part number etc are written on this drawing sheet so this is the typical example of assembly drawing this is the top view of this assembly drawing and this shows the sectional plane for this component what is the tape drill size for m12 by 1.7 thread yes this is the tape drill size 10.3 how much further does the tape drill depth proceed past the thread depth 3p is equal to 3 into 1.75 that is 5.25 draw and dimension the threaded features and fill in the title block like this so these are the details shown in the detailed drawing a hole is drilled which is represented by the dotted lines dimension part number 2 and fill in the title block these are the three views of the detailed drawing of the component and these are the dimensions which are inserted in this drawing draw and dimension part number 3 the third part which we seen in the assembly drawing so this is the third part and these are the three views of this part and the dimensions are inserted in this detailed drawing you can draw this component like this so these are this is isometric view and this is the orthographic view of that component so that is the detailed drawing of component number 3 now fourth component fifth and sixth fourth component is this bolt fifth one is screw sixth one is nut so create a standard parts sheet and fill in the title block as these are the standard parts they should be written at the last the specifications are written on over here so in this no need to draw their views just we can write the specifications if this as these parts are a special parts or standard parts now we see the assembly drawing example i want to talk about how to create a two dimensional drawing from your 3d part i have a part open here that we modeled earlier in the class uh, what we want to be able to do is communicate on paper what this part would look like and so to do that we want to be able to create a front view and a top view and a side view drawing we can get glimpses of what that'll look like by changing the view in the heads up display so there's a top view and then we look and there's a right view and then sometimes drawings include uh, a three view. Now industry is really changing to move away from drawings and move more to 3D part models. So you would actually send this to the manufacturer as a 3D model if you wanted them to build it. But at the same time for record keeping purposes it's always nice to have a drawing. So to create a drawing from a part if you go to the new tab and click on the down arrow click on make new drawing from part or assembly. You're asked to choose what type of sheet format you'd like. We can talk more about this later, but for now, we'll go ahead and choose A, which is just fine. And what that does is it uh, puts a border on the sheet and a title and different things like that. Next, in the right view, you see this view palette. If you click on one of the views, like the front view, and drag it into the paper space, it will create a view for you. And then it continues. If you drag to the right, it creates a right view. And if you drag to the top, it's going to create a top view. And if you drag over kind of diagonally, it cre creates an isometric view. You can see next to my mouse that I have the right click green arrow or green check and the right click arrow. So if I right click, I automatically exit out of that. These guys aren't laid out exactly like I'd like, so I'm going to drag this view over. And I do that by clicking in the view area. You can see the dashed blue line and dragging. Okay. And it turns out actually that this is using first angle projection. There's a difference between first and third angle projection. And I'd like to change it to third angle projection, which is the standard in the United States. To do that, I right click on the sheet in the property manager and I go to properties. This shows me the sheet scale and a bunch of different parameters that I can change. And right up here in the top, you can see the type of projection. If you click on the third angle radio button, it switches the views around. Now this is a nice drawing, but what I really want to do is I want to start dimensioning the part. And I can do that by clicking on the Annotation tab. And my Smart Dimension tool is here just like it was when I was creating the part. And I can go ahead and make a Smart Dimension. You'll notice though that that dimension 
let me get it unselected, shows up as a light gray. This dimension is what's called a reference dimension, and it's not the actual type of dimension we should be making most of the time. What we really want to use is, are the dimensions we use to create the part. And so we click on Model Items, and then we can say Source or Desti Destination, and we choose the entire model. And we can under Dimensions, we can check Marked for Drawing, and we can check Not Marked for Drawing. So this is going to import all the dimensions we put on the part. And lastly, I think we can choose, we'll just go ahead and click on Check. And what this is going to do is it automatically dimensions the part based on the dimensions we originally put into the part when it was created. You can click on dimensions and move them around uh, as you like. You'll notice SolidWorks 2010 has a new feature. When you click on a dimension, it opens up a context manager where you can edit the text right uh, in this spot. So I could say TYP for typical here, and that will make it known that this if I zoom in, this is dimensioning the fillet right here, and by adding TYP, we know that that's typical, so where there's other fillets, we can do that. It's always a good practice to make sure that your dimensions are off of a drawing, so move your views far enough apart from each other that they aren't overlapping the dimensions. Uh, let me move this bottom one down. You can see it kind of moves the uh, other two views. And if I zoom in on this, uh, what's unique about these drawing, these uh, dimensions is you see that they're black. And what happens is that I can now modify my part by just double clicking on a dimension right here. So say I want to make this three quarters of an inch instead. Now everything goes gray because it needs to be rebuilt. So if I click on my rebuild button, it's going to work on rebuilding that geometry with that dimension at three quarters. And now if I go to my window, and go back over to example 5, my geometry is changed here as well. So that's why you want to use dimensions that are black, because by doing that, you can actually edit the part directly from the drawing. If you had a reference dimension, you wouldn't be able to do that. So to make a good drawing, make sure that you pull your dimensions far enough away. Make sure that they're all readable. So SolidWorks isn't super smart. You still have to go in and edit dimensions. I like this angle dimension. We should probably move out a little bit so that it's easier to read. That's the gist of it. When you're done, you can go ahead and click on Save, and it will save uh, all the parts that you've done. And we'll save this as an example 5 drawing. That'll be just fine. And you're good to go. You can also make a PDF by doing a Save As and change the document type. Right here, save as type. If you click on that and go down to PDF, it'll